just through the meat grinder. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you finally just started. Yeah, I, I just started recording. recording. I just forgot. We're warmed up now, though. It's good. Yeah. It's, it's like classic. doing doing this on my end, like Nima or whoever the other person is on the other end has it easy. Like they don't have three computers open and have a bunch of buttons to press when they just rolled out of bed and the coffee hasn't even hit them yet. But I do. I need an assistant. And this is my <laughs> wife's day off. She sleeps and does laundry. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So pork fest. All right. Workfest. Oh, since we're recording. So, Garrett Fox, G. Fox from the Disindoctrination Podcast, tell me about Porkfest. It is just, uh, you know, you and Nima often talk about uh, Lib Pair, uh, yeah. Libertarian Paradise. And I can safely say this is the closest thing you can get to a Libertarian Paradise when it comes to uh, living under this uh, government. And it, it's just, it is. It's not chaos or anything. It's just, but everybody's doing whatever they want. Nobody cares. There's, I mean, there's kids running around, all kinds of activities for them. I see all kinds of families and everybody having a good time. And then, and then the sun goes down and it really gets wild. <laughs> drunken, I mean, or, drunken orgies. <laughs> drunken I, orgies while people fire guns in the air while they're in the orgy. That's what you know. I didn't you know. hear a single gun <laughs> fired except for the newbie shoot, which apparently good. was a really cool event. I think, um, your boy Boston had something to do with that too. Yeah, my boy Boston. Yeah, Boston Tea Party from the uh, the Western Auxiliary, the the Wyoming, the Wyoming uh, free free state Wyoming. Man, I need. I'm not awake. I'm not awake. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have you on. You've been you've been awake for a while, huh? Uh, I guess a little while. Yeah, I just got back from the Cracker Barrel. You cracker. <laughs> it's a nasty French toast. Did you go to Bloodbath and Beyond? They're usually right next door to the, the Cracker Barrel. No, I didn't. Blood, Bloodbath and Beyond. We call Bed Bath Beyond that because in The Simpsons, when Homer decides to buy a gun, he goes to a, a gun store called Bloodbath and Beyond. <laughs> That's awesome. They get cheap flat pack guns in there. What's flat pack? Uh, it's like when oh. you get furniture from Walmart. Or <laughs> you get to put it together. Yeah. So you get like a bunch of gun parts and a little hex wrench. Yep. Yeah, and it was in a flat box. Yep. So, what else happened at Pork Fest? Well, uh, from what I can remember, there was a bonfire every night, and that that was usually where everybody would kind of culminate. Like Monday and Tuesday were kind of uh, easy going. There wasn't very many events or anything going on, so people were just kind of running around, uh, finding everybody who's here, when they're going to be here, uh, who's not here. Let's get them over here kind of stuff and we had actually gotten a park model this year which was nice so we didn't have to suffer in the hot tents as soon as the sun came up but it was hot it was really hot i kept on meaning to go jump in the pool every morning but there was just so much stuff going on it was like okay let's go find people yeah. and uh I, I i ran into ernest hancock when they were setting up that geodesic dome yay yeah so that was pretty cool watching them actually build that and how they they make it sound like it's really easy, and then you, you get to watch them, and it's like you see a little bit of frustration coming out. But it was, I think it was worth it in the end. They had like uh, this whole, it, it was basically like a little three dimensional store, like, or a, it was 360 degrees around. So you could come up to these little windows they had set up in it, and they were selling all kinds of swag. Swag. So you got a um, Freedom Fiends dime card. Was it one of the ones that said, speaking of swag, was it one of the ones that said Freedom Fiends at Pork Fest in spirit? No, I didn't get one of those. I remember you talking about those. Well, we'll talk a little more about dime cards when we when we come back. What did uh what what did your say when you got? Um, it's a John Telegato quote that I'm going to have to grab. <laughs> cool. I don't remember. <laughs> the government stole a bunch of my silver. We're going to um talk about that on uh on the interview that I did with Drew. Okay. But we've solved it. It won't happen again. Wow. <laughs> oh, I recorded that. Okay. Let's Hi, I'm Nima Vidati from the Freedom Fiends podcast, and I'm excited about Vaporsmith's electronic cigarettes. I dig the taste, and I dig the freedom to vape anywhere the nanny staters would wet their pants if I smoked. Vaporsmiths.com is run by a liberty-loving entrepreneur, not some subsidized tax eater conglomerate. I'm Michael Dean of the Freedom Fiends, and I love Vaporsmiths. I smoke three packs of tobacco cigarettes a day for decades, but now I'm only using Vaporsmiths. I love the flavors, I don't smell like smoke, and I save money, so I have more to spend on ammo and treats for my kitties. Available in four strengths and ten delicious flavors. 
Reds, classics, Turkish, menthol, strawberry, cherry, vanilla, coffee, minty mint, and cloves. Go to Vaporsmiths.com. Use coupon code FREEDOMFIEND to get 25% off your order. This is a limited time offer. Vaporsmiths at Vaporsmiths.com. Tired of the false economy? Want to carry real money in a form that people will dig getting? Don't Tread on Meme now has Freedom Fiends and Guns and Weed Silver Dime Cards. Collect all four. Trade them with your friends. Freedom Fiends Silver Dime Cards are also great for starting conversations with statists about liberty. Go to FreedomFiends.com today and click the link at the top that says Silver Dime Cards. That's FreedomFiends.com. Freedom Fiends Live. Hey, G-Fox. You're cutting in and out there, man. Uh-oh. There. That's good. That's good. Okay. You there? Damn interwebs. Interwebs. Yeah. Quit surfing porn on your other computer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sleepy, man. I went to bed at like 5. Got up at like 2. I'm, uh, in the summer, I just tend to sleep. I'm generally a night owl, but in the summer, I sleep, like, all day, because it's hot. Yep. And then I roam around the night and <laughs> rule the streets. So, uh, yeah, this is, you know, I, my life is structured such, and I've lived to structure it this way, that I don't usually have to wake up to an alarm clock ever, except I have to for this show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that really, really sucks about, uh, or society, if you will, everybody has to wake up to an arm alarm clock at a time that they don't want to get up, and they're all grumpy. Yeah, they that from a very young age. Well, the interesting thing the interesting thing is a lot of humans and a lot of mammals like don't have a sleep schedule that's quite twenty four hours. You know, they're uh, I people. What is it? Animal. A lot of animals are nocturnal. I forget what the opposite of that is. Diurnal, and then uh, what is it, DJ? The other one that that. I, crepuscular i'm crepuscular most active at dawn and dusk yeah that makes sense yeah that's a lot of you know a lot of like cats and insects basically things that hunt things that are also crepuscular that that makes sense so i guess i should be out biting moths and birds in the backyard with my cat and hooting from people's trees yep so pork fest man was there a drone um, well, which type of drone? There was a good drone and there was some, some bad flying vehicles too. <laughs> Tell me about both of them. Well, the good one was awesome. That was, uh, uh, I, I didn't see it until they were doing the big group pick where I, I'm sure you've seen them where everybody's standing up yeah, on that. The class photo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, uh, they had a, this guy had his little hobby. I think it was a quadricopter. It had four rudders, I believe. And, uh, it was, it was cool. He was like hovering it right, right above us and everybody's mm-hmm. kind of wave into it. I, I'd love to see the footage of that thing. But, uh, we always thought that'd be a good thing to have at any uh, protests or rallies or any of that Occupy stuff, just to see the you know, cool well, area. You could, get, like, you could also yeah. get, use it for your surveillance. You know, they have their surveillance, but you know, right. let's say the cops are beating somebody up and they're pushing cameras back. You could fly this over it and get an aerial view of what the cops are really doing. I bet they'd shoot it down too, though. Yeah, good luck, man. It's uh, it's a lot harder to shoot a moving object than people think, and well, true, you, you know. And it's one thing with a shot shell, you know, like skeet shooting, mm-hmm. where uh, you know, it's going to disperse. But shooting a rifle or even a handgun into the air in an urban area can kill people. You know, it's oh, you, sure. Yeah, you saw the MythBusters on that, right? And the CSI. The bullets got to come down somewhere. Yeah, and it's like. Technically, because of uh, escape velocity, if it went completely straight up and completely straight down, it wouldn't be coming fast enough to hit anybody. But bullets never go completely straight up and straight down. True. You know, it wouldn't come fast enough to kill anybody. You know, if it's at any angle other than straight up, it will it will kill someone if it hits them when they come down, even if it's a, you know, uh, 38. Some, something like that happened down here at the Inner Harbor. Uh, I think it was on... It was it was some big holiday. I, I I can't remember if it was like Halloween or there was a bunch of costumes and stuff. But uh, somebody shot a gun like over off into the city, and the bullet landed over by the Inner Harbor, and it killed somebody. Killed some kid. Yeah, it's, really sad. It's really bad gun form, man. I would never ever do that. You know, it's you, like never fire a gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. When you fire a gun in the air, you don't know what it's going to hit. 
Yeah, well, that was that was Fourth of July last year. Yeah, so that's almost that was almost a year ago. That's so common in Los Angeles. I used to live in L.A. and they every about a week before every Fourth of July, the the sheriff's department put posters up all over the city saying, "Enjoy your patriotic holiday, but please do not fire your firearms into the air." <laughs> yeah. They have it for July Fourth, and they have it for New Year's Eve. I'm dead serious. It's from the sheriff's yeah. department. No AK dancing in the streets. AK <laughs> the AK dance. Yeah, what is the AK dance? Uh, I believe that is when you fire your AK-47 up in the air and uh, go, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, CNN and, P- and people like Fox love to show footage of that in the Middle East, <laughs> like that that's a daily celebration everywhere, you know? Right. Like, you know, five times a day after you, after you pray, you shoot your AK in the air. That's what Fox would have you believing. Oh, then speaking of AKs, this, I, man, I, I need to, to got the guy's business card I took it. He had a, a gunsmithing shop. I can't remember what his name was or where he's from, but he had these awesome AK-47 sitting there. Like all, like everything was custom on it. It had a, a collapsible stock and then another one had an adjustable stock and it was like this really cool like green composite and he had like three rails up on the front of it. I don't know. He didn't have anything mounted on it, but we were kind of talking about the different accessories you could put on the end of there. I like AKs so much more than the 15s. Really? Uh, so few Americans think that, and I agree with that. I love, I, my, just, I love my AK, and I don't like ARs. They feel like toys, and they feel like government <laughs> guns to me. Well, and it's almost like, I mean, they fire good. Yeah, whatever. They're cool. Uh, the AK-47 holds so many different rounds. I mean, what? how many different rounds can you put in, like, an AK? I'm not even... I don't know. The, 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 weapon, the weapon that has the most type of things that can go in it is a shotgun. I mean, you can get all types of buckshot. You can get slugs. I mean, you can yeah. get things that shoot fire. You can get things that shoot razor blades. You can use non-lethal, you know, the police use them for non-lethal... Uh, I don't, know if, I don't know if citizens can buy those or not, or if, you know, common folk. I don't like the word citizen. I think citizen. you can't. I, th- I I know you can in Maryland. Uh, people suggest them for home defense. So for, yeah, of course they would. How PC? Yeah, exactly. I know it's disgusting. It's like no, I want I want some freaking buckshot. Well, yeah, I mean it's a it's a thing of like you know, do you want something that is going to stop them or something that'll maybe stop them? Yeah. Yeah, that's that comes from the same mentality as people are like, well, you didn't have to shoot my son when he broke into your house and held a gun to your throat, your a knife to your throat. You should have yeah. shot him in the leg. You didn't have to kill him. No, nope. no. Nope. If somebody's gonna, if somebody's trying to kill me, I'm gonna take them out first. That's, yeah, shooting someone in the leg while they're trying to struggle with you would be about as hard as shooting down a quadcopter too. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's one of the reasons I got a shotgun because you you don't even have to be a perfect shot and you can still take out your target. We like guns. We like guns on our show. What do you got? Uh, I got a Stoger. It's a, it's kind of a piece of crap. It's like the low end shotgun, but it's a 12 gauge Stoger, uh, P350 with the pistol grip on it. Hi, I'm Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends, and like you, I'm concerned with privacy on the internet. The electronic police state is strangling our previous protections, and the central scrutinizer is trying to squint into all areas of our lives. That's why smart people surf the net with a VPN or virtual private network. I use a VPN from Bola VPN. Bola VPN has your utmost security in mind and will allow you to surf, email, and do other computing tasks without leaving a trail of breadcrumbs across the internet. Unlike many other VPN providers, Bola VPN doesn't log traffic. With Bola VPN, you can change your apparent location or disappear completely. Bola VPN has been around since 2007, which is OG in the VPN world. Bola VPN is easy to install and configure. Best of all, it can be had for less than 25 cents a day, which is a small price to pay for this much security. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them through the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. 
The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Janome on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E dash O-M-E. What do you load it with? I usually just have, I, I just have like these little pigeon rounds right now. We do a, a lot of clay pigeon shooting here lately. And now I want to get a different stock because I aim better with a regular stock as opposed to the pistol grip. Shotgun would probably be the best thing for shooting down a low flying quadricopter. Uh, especially in an urban area, it'd be safer. And, you know, uh, you wouldn't have to quite hit it. That's why people hunt birds with, uh, with bird shot. Yep. Yeah. Was, you just have to wing it, as they say. Yeah, there you go. Uh, obviously not good for deer. You want to be shooting deer with slugs and stuff. I saw my wife and I went to this uh, this nursery out like 40 miles, like 20 miles from here yesterday. It was amazing. It was huge. had everything. Uh, we saw two little tiny deer. We didn't see their mother, but they didn't look like they'd lost their mother. You know, they were just kind of hanging out. I think the mother was nearby, but <clears throat> I've rarely seen two deer this young in the wild. It was pretty cool. It's a beautiful thing. It's a nice date with my baby. Uh, speaking of crazy wildlife, I saw a bear at Porkfest. At Porkfest? Yep. Yeah, I saw footage of it. Dave Ridley shot footage of it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he caught the two bears. I only saw one of them. We'll talk about that and take phone calls when we come back from this break. And I'll give out the number at the top, at the other end of the break. I'll meet y'all on the other side. Worms. Worms, 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 worms. <laughs> That's me. All, all the music in uh, Freedom Fiends Live is me. It's all red, yeah. ar- red arm of Wyoming stuff. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just mixed the vocals out. Yeah. So um, we're ready to take some calls here. The live studio number on Freedom Fiends Live is 307-215-5171. That's 307-215-5171. I'm going to keep the call short, though, because i got to put Garrett on hold to take the call. So call in, say hi, ask a question, you know, tell me I'm evil, whatever you want to do, and uh, I will take your th- – then th- we'll hang up on you. <laughs> 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 no one's going to call in. I had to look the number up, man. Nima usually gives it out. I think there's a way to merge the calls, too. I, I, I thought about that last night after we had talked. Huh. I know you cannot put, um, you can't disable call waiting. I wanted to look that up in the first part, but uh, let me look at that. Merge, you talk about the bear, and I'll look up merge calls on Skype. Oh, yes, the awesome scary bears that were rummaging through the trash at uh, Porkfest. I, I wish I would have seen the both of them. I'll have to watch that video that Dave Ridley posted again. It was pretty cool. Bears. Ooh. But I found my dime card. I went. Yeah. Hold through. it up. Hold it up to the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Can everybody hear this? I, I can hear it. <laughs> uh, but it was the the quote I wanted to read, and I didn't want to butcher it. So it's actually a really easy quote, and I can't believe I don't have it memorized. But uh, school is a twelve year jail sentence where bad habits are the only curriculum truly learned. Wow. I like. And that. I feel like that kind of encompasses what. Uh, our podcast is all about the disindoctrination podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the disindoctrination podcast. What do you do on there and who is it and how's it work? Well, it, it, it's been a bit of a rotating guest thing here for a little while. Me and my buddies started it, Kevin, a little, and he got, put in, he, January. Got, he got put in the FEMA camps, right? Yeah. They yoinked him up because Maybe he, he, was, and, he and uh, Nima are probably in the same FEMA camp. Like, you know, Doing a podcast together, just standing on a milk crate, like talking to the other people there about liberty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right up up on their soapboxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so FEMA came and yoinked him up, and so I had to find another guest, and it just wound up Eddie Free uh, has been a regular a regularly occurring guest on there too. So I kind of, I kind of have the same thing going as the anarchy gumbo, but now Eddie's going to be a lot more frequent because he went out and got a microphone and it sounds a lot better because we're still doing it through Skype too. Yeah. I like Eddie. He's listening, isn't he? I wouldn't be surprised if he was listening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he said on the Facebooks that uh, he was really happy you were coming on here today. Uh, I'm very happy that I'm on here today. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, call merging for Skype, and it looks like you need a um, a pro account, maybe, or you have to drag yeah. people into it. I mean, I have a phone account, but that's not like a pro full account. So I don't know. I don't know if we can do that. I could try it, but uh, you know, we'll risk hanging up on the person who's calling in with their 
their hopes and dreams. Yeah. It might be worth a try though. Am I getting a neck? Yeah, a little bit. You're dropping it out. Stop stop surfing the porn there. <laughs> Uses up a lot of bandwidth. It does. It's this H D quality. So did you see that Michelle Obama cited Jesus as a model for citizenship? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the headline, which, you know, to me means, OK, does that mean that that citizens should go into banks and kick over the tables? And uh, let's we'll see what well, Jesus really pissed off the government. I mean, Jesus was actually killed by the government after a fair trial with the cooperation of police and soldiers who were just following their orders. And he was killed legally for the crime of sedition. Yeah. So I guess that's Michelle Obama thinks this is a good model for citizenship. All right. That's, that's very an interesting look at it. Yeah. I don't think that's what she meant, though. I like, I like to use that rap with Christians uh, who are statist, you know, who are like, well, we need the government to enforce these laws. And, you know, I'm just like, that sounds like Christian Sharia. But, uh, yeah, I try to tread lightly with my Christian brethren. I am just not Christian, but uh, <laughs> I don't I, I'm a deist. But I don't bash anyone who's a Christian. About a quarter of our fans are Christian. It's interesting. People, Christians, some Christians like the fiends. I've seen a couple of Christian anarchist groups uh, when I was talking to my mom about this stuff a little while ago. She's like, anarchy, oh my God, no. But now she's like hardcore, like, all right, I'm done with the government. I like Ben. Really? Let's talk about that in a second. But I like Ben Quaker's quote quote of, if you put, if you, if you support the government, you're kicking god off the throne yep i've heard you know, that you're putting someone before god yeah something before god you're putting an idol you're putting an idol yeah before he says god. it a little more eloquently mm-hmm. <laughs> he says a lot of things more eloquently than i do and maybe than you maybe than you do i'm still so pissed i didn't get a chance to go meet him at Porfest. we were both there all week just a few campsites away and i never made it down there well and you didn't run into him too which i would say is a favorable endorsement of the popularity of pork fest you know i mean if you yep. go if you go to most parties or like campouts group campouts you know and you're looking for a certain person you just can go oh there they are they're right, right over there on the other side of the campfire but it's like this is like a city that happens for a while yep. you know i i believe it is the uh 19th largest city in new hampshire for the time every time it's there well there was over a thousand people this time i just made that up man i don't know it sounds right though I, you know, I don't know what many of the town. I mean, I can't imagine Keene. I, I wonder how big Keene is. Poppy. I don't know, but uh, like, we can find Manchester out. It's probably pretty big. I have this uh, system in my house where I have this computer hooked up to a uh, telephone and I can access information. It's really cool. Let me look up for you. Um, Keene, New Hampshire's population. <laughs> I mean, when I was a kid, if someone had something like that, I mean, that'd be something that, like you'd pay $50,000 to have to just be able to search the population of towns from your home, you know? Yep. It's 23,409. Okay, yes. There yeah. weren't quite that many people. Yeah. Besides, I don't want to I don't want to have my porn slow down here. <laughs> <laughs> You're streaming porn. So speaking of streaming, we have a new uh a new advertiser, a new sponsor. It's called Bola VPN. And they uh I think they're in Indonesia. They're I've been chatting a lot with the owner of it. They they're a company that provides a inexpensive and very robust virtual private network. You know what that is, Garrett? Yeah, uh, kind of. Elaborate. <laughs> well, it allows you to like surf without uh, people seeing what you're surfing. Okay, so like it encrypts everything? Yeah, uh, it encrypts things and it goes through a different IP address in a different country, different nation. You can pick the, uh, IP, okay. you can pick the IP address, but... Uh, yeah, I highly recommend Bola VPN, and there's a link on Freedom Fiends now over on the right side, right sidebar. And I've been using it for about a week, and I love it, man. It's pretty cool. cool. It's when you know, check that. Oh, yeah. Basically, you're cock blocking the central scrutinizer when you use it. Okay, yeah, because I've heard I've heard of the ones that uh, just like change your IP address randomly. No, back forth. that's that's just a uh, a proxy. This is a proxy plus a lot more. This <laughs> is the central scrutinizer. Oh no! Do, Do not, not use a virtual, virtual private network. network. What the hell was that, man? <laughs> what was that? Did you hear that? I, I did. It came through on my end for sure. Yeah. Yep. So Nima's uh, traveling, <laughs> moving to. He's not really in a FEMA camp. He's moving to Texas. He's in the process. Yeah. When's he like? Is he like on the road right now? 
Uh, we got a call here. I'm going to take this real quick and then come back to you. And if We're I lose you, call right back. All right. Freedom Fiends, who's this? Hey, Michael, it's Dave from Ohio, the one in front of the Bearcat yeah, um, on, I, your, on your Facebook wall. I love that picture. What's up? Oh, great. Hey, um, I was wondering, could you have Garrett talk about, like, what he thinks about, you know, the outside the system activism, as it's called, and getting arrested and all that kind of all that kind of jazz. Okay. What do you think about it? I, I think it's, I think it's really high cost and, and low, like low return. You know, it's like, you're going to, you're going to get tossed in the clink over stuff that you're, you're never going to make an argument in court where they're going to say, Oh yeah, you know what? You're right. Our power <laughs> is entirely illegitimate and you're free to go. Are you talking about anyone you know, in particular when, when, here? Not anyone in particular. I mean, I, I'm not certain, like, what happened with the whole Jillian Batty thing. I only kind of caught, like, little bits and pieces of it with, you know, with you and Mark Stevens and all that. I mean, I read a lot of, you know, a lot of the, the kind of back and forth on it, but I don't know what originally sparked it off. I know she got picked up in Texas. Yeah, and we're, go, we're going in. We're going into a break. We're going into a break here. We're, we're out. Michael Dean from the um, Freedom Feed. Worms. You don't have the fancy knobs that I have, huh? No, I just have my voice. Yep. Yep. So our caller asked a question, kind of a two-part question, and uh, then he had to go make dinner for his family. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hit this. I kind of wanted to stay away from this today because I'm really sick of it. But since <laughs> someone asked, um, this is a guy named Mark Stevens. He does a show on Liberty Radio Network called uh, Adventures in Legal Land. And he talks about the law a lot. He says on his website he's not an attorney and very occasionally says it on the show. And I guess there's now disclaimers on the show. I haven't heard him, but uh, Ian put disclaimers on because of something I wrote. Although I'm powerless over Ian. I didn't make Ian do it. Can't make Ian do anything, man. <laughs> Can't make an anarchist do something, especially on his own property. And LRN is his own property. <clears throat> so uh, your friend and mine... Garrett, your friend and mine, Jillian, got uh, busted for a tiny amount of hash in Texas and somehow got charged with two drug felonies on her way to Porkfest. And uh, me and a few other people bailed her out, and uh, she went on to Porkfest and had a good time. Did you see her did, there? Did, you see her there? did Jillian make it to Porkfest? I, I don't think she did. <clears throat> ah, okay. Yeah, because I, I think that little incursion totally screwed up her entire pork fest I, ta I talked to her often but i didn't know that i was so busy with everything else in pork fest that week i didn't know and someone said on lrn somewhere like yeah jillian's gonna get here today so i mean i assumed she was but so anyway she uh she got busted <clears throat> and she her plan was never to uh, and she told me this, her plan was never to like fight the man and make a stand and, you know, <laughs> try to end the drug war by doing anything other than hiring an attorney and going into court and trying to not go to prison. Like it wasn't an act of civil disobedience. No. And once she was arrested, it was not a act. She had no intention of any kind of civil dis disobedience. She wanted to, you know, be a good girl and you know, hang her head down and, and take, take her, uh, well, I don't even want to say that, you know, she just, she, she, she didn't plan to go in and represent herself. She didn't plan to go in and challenge the judge's authority or question who he's working for or anything like that. She wanted to hire an attorney, you know, raise money to hire an attorney or get a public defender and go in and try to not go to prison. Yeah. Keep her um, ass up. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, a friend of Mark Stevens heard about it and hooked them up. And Mark Stevens contacted Jillian and had her on the show. And uh, I've heard him before. You know, I have LRN on in the background all the time. So I've heard him before. I've seen his YouTube videos at Porkfest. And I never I never dug what he does. But, you know, I certainly never had a, re, a, a desire to write him and yell at him or anything like that. But uh, <clears throat> then he had Jillian on. And I thought he gave her some horrible advice. Really, really bad advice. Um, and, you know, basically saying like, don't get an attorney, go in and ask the judge, you know, who do you represent? Oh, the state? Well, can I get a fair trial here? Um, doing, right. doing so, after talking to several attorneys, doing so would put her in prison. And if she just gets even a public defender and goes in, she is likely to not serve any jail time. So I wrote, him a, I wrote an open letter to him 
uh, damning the whole thing and, and everything he does. And I sent it to him. And then about five minutes later, two minutes later, I posted it on my blog, libertarianpunk.com. You can go there now and read the whole thing if you want, because I'm supposed to be on uh, Free Talk Live with him Monday or t- I don't know when. He hasn't gotten back to me yet. So I don't know when it's going to be. But uh, it turned into a whole cluster fark. You know, he answered on his blog, which is Mark, M-A- Mark with a C, Stevens.net, if you want to read about it. And uh, to prepare to do some trial prep, to listen to him uh, taking me to people's court on Free Talk Live next week. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's an interesting uh, experiment, too, I think, as a, as a spectator on the whole thing. Uh, experiment but, you know, what? Uh, I guess, like, kind of just like, uh, social decision makings, I guess, especially when, when it comes to like legal stuff, like what does happen to the legal stuff? Uh, once- oh, you mean like, like this is how it would work in lib pair is in the court of peer opinion or maybe into the trans, you know, even the transition period. Yeah. Well, there's a, I mean, there are, you know, lawyers and judges, uh, who, you know, on, on some different websites have like, years ago, like called for this guy to be thrown in prison. Like he's practicing law without a license, but uh, I guess he's gone up against them. He says, and you know, nothing's ever come of it. So he's, there's some loophole or something in the way he's doing it, that he's not jailable or not in jail. I don't know. And it's like, you know, we say constantly, you know, everybody on LRN, every, every agorist, every voluntarist, every, all of us, all of us weirdos who don't like authority all say that, you know, in the, in lib pair, this would work in, it wouldn't work. A lot of stuff wouldn't even work in private courts. It would work in, you know, you'd shun somebody. So I basically tried to shun him to get some attention on him and he didn't take it well. And he ran with it. And, uh, then I didn't take his response. Well, he said, I sounded like a COINTELPRO plant, which is a, an FBI agent that pretends to be part of a, a liberty movement and, you know, tries to stir up things or tells, you know, I guess he said I was telling people to like cooperate with the system. So I'm evil. That was know. a whole program too, counterintelligence. Yeah. It program. started in the sixties. I don't know if they still have it. They certainly still have it, but not under that name. I mean, recently, right. you know, the feds sent people to occupy Oakland and, you know, found the peaceful hippies that were in occupy Oakland and said, Hey, psst, this isn't working. Here, I could tell you how to make a bomb. We could blow up a, a bridge. You know, right. that's what COINTELPRO does. And he, he said that I was doing that. And I was like, that's like 50 times worse than telling someone they're a snitch. And the snitch is the worst thing you could call somebody because a snitch is, uh, but a snitch only does it because they're in a circumstance of the state. You know, a COINTELPRO yep. agent is someone who like goes to college to study, to work up the ladder, to become that guy, you know? Yep. Yeah. So I just went off and I said, you know, I don't want to come on, you know, he wanted to interview me and I said, I don't want to go talk to you on, on the internets. And he's like, why not? I'm like, I I said some really bad stuff. I said that, uh, the, the worst one was I said that, uh, you know, when you, when you grab a rabid dog, you don't sit down and interview it and ask it why it's rabid, you know, which is not <laughs> very polite. Uh, and I, I regret that. And I'm, I apologize for that. And I, I apologize by email and I'm going to apologize on free talk live and then, uh, enter the, court of counselor mark i guess someday this week i don't know what day it's going to happen he hasn't gotten back to he and ian haven't gotten back to me oh, i'm definitely going to listen so that's that whole story if you want to read the details of it before the uh the judge judy stuff happens on free talk live it's going to be on uh you can go on libertarianpunk.com and then mark m-a-r-c stevens s-t-e-v-e-n-s dot net and read the uh the, the relevant court documents before we go into this. So the bigger question, well, do you have an opinion on that? That's, that's, that's question two. And then we'll go to question one, but do you have an opinion on any of this? Your honor, counselor, counselor. Are you, are you asking me? I, I'm just kind of standing back at the sidelines. Like I, I've listened to Mark Stevens show quite a few times in the past. I mean, and I always thought like he had some very different or some very interesting ways to look at stuff when you're going into the courtrooms and, I, it's just, I don't know, I find all that stuff kind of boring, so I never really <laughs> listen to it. It's so. boring until you need it, you know? Exactly, yeah. I mean, that's a good point, too. Uh, I like I liked hearing about the stuff on uh, DROs, like S- Stefan talks about dispute resolution organizations a lot. Yeah, but I that's like- all that's all LibPair stuff. This is like doing LibPair kind of stuff in the actual courts. No, I get you. Uh, I hear you. And, you know, that's kind of like what the other half of the caller's question was about, you know, going into jail what exactly was his question 
I, well, I could hear we'll, we'll get to that. It was a two part question. I mean, it really was like, what do you think about activism with people getting arrested to fight the man? But that's, that's a whole nother question. So let's finish this one first. Um, you know, my thing about Mark is I, I'm fine with what he does, but I, I just, I just thought that offering it as advice for someone facing double felonies in Texas was a really bad idea. And, uh, I mean, I've had like 20 or 30 of his fans contact me and say, like, it's interesting. They all say, Mark didn't tell me to contact you. They all lead with some variation of that line. But, uh, you mm -hmm. know, and they tell me about the successes they've had. And it's like, I haven't heard one yet that's verifiable that's a felony. I've heard one that someone said, yeah, it's a felony, but I can't say who because the person's really private. It's like, I actually had a guy say to me today, Mark's methods work. I got my jaywalking ticket. That's on my blog. If you want, it's the last comment on it last time I looked. So, uh, you know, oh, what, what may work for a jaywalking ticket is not going to work for a double felony in Texas where the judge already hates her because cop block called up and hassled him. Nice. Yeah. They had a call, I, they had heard, a call I actually flood. heard that Jillian was asking people to stop the call flood. Yeah. And now she's asking people to stop sending her advice, Mark's fans and other people. Uh, to, you know, she just wants to be left alone on this. She's talking to an attorney on Monday and uh, she does not want Pete. She's really upset that people keep bugging her. Wow. And, That's you know, I'm sure 10 people will email her and say, did Michael make that up or it's true? But, you know, if a friend of hers wants to email her and ask her that to confirm it, do it. But don't mm -hmm. bug her, man. She's facing a lot. Well, and how are we going to get our stateless suites? I know, man. I know. I love stateless suites. Have you had any of it? Yeah, they're great. I got the uh, caramel drops and they were awesome. I've been dropping them in my coffee in the mornings. It's such a good, it's like, you know, you don't need any sugar or creamer. Just drop one of those things in. Worms. So we're going into a, a uh, when we get back from, uh, I'm not allowed to use the word break. Ian said, don't use the word break. It's unprofessional. So in a few <laughs> minutes after some, uh, anyway, we're going to talk more about the other part of that question about the general idea of getting arrested as activism. Worms. This is the central scrutinizer. Do not listen to the freedom fiends. This is not worms. I have an effect on. All right, how are you doing there, G Fox? Doing good. Doing good. Worms. So we're listening to that ad with Tom Robbins, and I was like, he's like, man, man, man. It's really wimpy. It's a, it's a good ad. It's pro pot, but uh, it's wimpy. And you asked me if I'd heard the one with Montel Williams, and I was like, yeah. And I was like, did you know he's a guns and weed guy? He's a statist guns and weed guy, but he. Smokes medical marijuana and uh, also, <laughs> I don't know how he gets away with this, but saying this, but he has an AK-47. He's like, I'm entirely, a f I think anyone should be able to have any gun they want. I have an AK-47. I think anyone should be able to have a gun as long as there's a chip in it that tracks it and lets the government know where it is at all times. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Sheesh. Yeah. Sheesh, Sheesh is my new go. cuss. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, back to the, the whole clamoring thing with, uh, you know, the pod B for whatever. Um, <clears throat> I have some advice for anyone if they ever, this isn't just Mark. It's <laughs> basically if anyone ever slams you on the internet seriously and undermines you, you know, maybe, maybe respond to it. But if you drag it out and get a bunch of people looking at it and commenting on it and challenge people to duels on the air and on a nationally syndicated radio show that has about a hundred thousand listeners, um, People are going to talk about it more on the internet, and you risk the Streisand effect. Do you know what the Streisand effect is, Garrett? Uh, not exactly. <clears throat> Basically, it's named after Barbara Streisand, unintended consequences of publicizing information by trying to damn it and cut it out, you know. Uh, Barbara Streisand tried to suppress, supp legally, you know, use the courts to suppress photographs of her residents, you know, like sued someone for publishing them, and, you know, all of a sudden, everyone's like, Barbara Streisand doesn't want people to see pictures of her house. And all of a sudden, everyone was sharing pictures of Barbara Streisand's house. Uh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you comment on something snitty that someone says about you and then, and then go away, it goes away. If you hammer away at it again and again and again for days and weeks on end, it, it will be the, one of the first things that eventually it'll be one of the first things that comes up when people search your name in perpetuity. Yeah, and it and news certainly travels fast in this little libertarian pocket of the internet. Yeah, but it it leaks out to the internet too. Um, yeah, I guess. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Mark. Um, you know, I'm gonna go. I've I've 
accepted his challenge to go on Free Talk Live and discuss it whenever they want to do that. I'm waiting to hear back. So let's talk in a bigger way about the idea of the question the guy asked. What do you think of getting arrested as as activism? What do you think, G Fox? Well, I think going out with the mindset of planning to get arrested is <laughs> never really a good idea. Um, obviously, a lot of people go out to protest and wind up getting arrested. Well, I've, or- I've said to Pete, you know, who gets arrested a lot and it, it turns into activism. You know, I said, brother, you should stop getting arrested, you know, trying to get arrested. Uh, it hurts. You know, you, you're, you're more used to the movement, not in jail. And he said, straight up, I never try to get arrested. So, yeah. you know, but people do a lot of things despite the fact that they could get arrested. And then when they do, they make activism out of it, I think is what we're talking about. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, Eddie had organized that um, Thomas Jefferson dance party not too long ago. And I remember yeah. when on the second day, like the big day when there was a lot of people there, nobody got arrested. And it's interesting because... A lot of people called that like a victory or whatever, but at the same time, like the cops told everybody, okay, find somebody, give them your stuff. You know, you're, if you're staying in the circle, dancing more in under the rotunda, like you're getting arrested, like enough's enough. So it's almost like, you know, the state did put their foot down, but they didn't have to arrest anybody. Yeah. Um, one thing with it is it sometimes can turn into the thing that, that changes the public tide, but so many, you know, um, you know, the lady that refused, the black lady that refused to get out of the back of the, of the front of the bus, you know, and go to the back of the bus was a galvanizing point in the civil rights movement or is talked about as one. And I believe it was one. How many other people did that and went to jail and never got arrested, you know? And, uh, I, and apparently, I, man, and of course, I can't remember the name of who you're referring to, but I had heard that she had people like that was an act of civil disobedience. Like she was willing lots of to people get were doing it. Were lots of people doing it? No, no, no. Like she had people on the other side, like ready to bail her out. Yeah. And yeah. Yep. So it, it was, you know, it was obviously, and it worked. It made the history books. Of course. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And it's good if you can raise that, you know, I mean, there are people that are trying to start funds for people that do civil disobedience, get arrested for bail and legal fees. Yep. Um, you know, I think Jill, Jillian's still trying to raise money for an attorney. So if anybody wants to go on her chip in, uh, I'll link that and you can contribute to her legal fund. She's not raised enough yet. She got, she raised enough to get out of jail and get her car back, you know, pay bail and get her car back, which is good, but she needs to raise more. Um, and that's not a civil disobedience thing. It's just a friend who's in need. So, but yeah, you know, I don't think that one person fighting the man and going to prison for a drug thing is going to do anything in the drug war. I really don't. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Uh, the drug war is not going to go anywhere until the state goes somewhere. I guess my opinion on it to answer the guy's question is I have great respect for people who do it. I don't do it. And I have great respect for people who do it and are clear about what they're doing. Um, I don't like it when people encourage other people to do it without understanding the ramifications of it. Yeah. Um, which, you know, is kind of part of what I accuse Mark of, but that's neither here nor there. I just, I really think if you want to do it to yourself, uh, you know, has he done it? I don't know. I don't even, I don't, I got to talk to him and see, you know, he'll, he'll take me out. He'll, he'll take me on. Uh, you know, I mean, I think his whole thing is trying to get people arrested, but his, he thinks, I think he thinks his whole thing is trying to keep people out of jail, but um, I don't know. There's, there's not always just two cut and dry answers to everything. So we'll see. But I mean, I have great respect for Larkin Rose who went into court with, you know, similar arguments kind of to what Mark uses in court that were, uh, not normal court arguments and like arguing, well, you know, look, your thing says this, I'm not violating this. So technically I don't have to pay tax. And they, they said, and they said in court to Larkin, you know, we the the prosecutor said we see that you don't that you're not breaking the law you know that you can do this but we're going to prosecute you anyway and the jury said okay and sent him to prison for a year i have a lot of respect for that guy and he didn't go in there thinking he could like fix the magic and make it work he went in there willing to go to prison we got a caller let me put you on hold here for a sec unknown phone number this could be worms hello caller you're on the air hello uh, hmm. 
I don't know, man. Hello? They're going. Go back to G Fox. Yo, G Fox, you there? Yo. There was no one there. I don't know. Oh, okay. I was going to say it was pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It would be pretty quick, too, just... if it was someone saying, well, F you, Michael Dean, and hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, everything you were just saying screams Jillian Heiklin. Screams Jillian what? Jillian Heiklin. The uh, old dude with the jury. No uh, no I love that guy. I love that yeah. guy. He, he's like left the country to avoid going to prison for handing out pamphlets about jury nullification. Yeah. 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 It, it adds up. It keeps yeah. piling up and piling up and piling up. So. Old people should do more activism. I mean, literally, they have less to lose if they get thrown in prison for life, for sure. Well, yeah. Less, <laughs> time, less time to lose. <laughs> uh, it's It's different strokes for different folks you know some people like that type of activism it gets uh it, it it seems to make a bigger point when the state actually gets involved but i think the in the end you know you can be putting your energies and your money to, towards a lot more good use uh you know in advancing like uh you know just the markets with your friends and family and stuff you know you can't really do that when you're in jail so yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to wrap my head around what to do about the state and people who are getting arrested for a purpose. They're like, I have an answer. You know, what are you doing? You're just talking about it on the internet. I'm doing something, and I can see that and I can respect it. Um, I'm not going to do anybody any more. I'm going to do less good in a cage than I'm going to do yakking on the internet. Really, is what it comes I, down I, to. I I completely agree. Personally. Ah. We got a caller. I'm going to take this call during the break. I'm going to keep recording. And, uh, worms. 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 Hold on a second, caller. Worms. Worms. So, caller, um, we're not on the air right now, but I'm still recording. So, this will go in the archives. Who are you and what's up? Oh, not this again, man. Damn it. G Fox, you there? Back on the Freedom Fiends. We are back on the Freedom Fiends, and we have uh, Ben Quaker here. And I explained to Ben Quaker, he, that was him trying to call three times. It wasn't someone calling and breathing heavy like it sounded like. Uh, <laughs> you know, I answered twice, and there was no one there, and just like static. So, um, so I told Ben the deal here that I can only have him on and then Garrett on. One at a time, and we're going to go back and forth. So uh, Garrett can call in, but uh, I think he's still on. I don't know how this works, man. So I told Ben he has to have concise statements of, uh, these are my demands, and then we'll put him on hold and take Garrett, and then uh, come back and go back. So what's up, Ben Quaker? How was Porkfest? Oh, Porkfest was great, great, great. I was in uh, constant contact with you by cell phone. Uh, I was kind of like the fly in your pocket, living there vicariously through you. Yeah, it was kind of weird because I couldn't, the cell phone coverage was on and off and I couldn't get to my voicemail. So I had like 18 voicemails waiting when I finally got back to coverage. 16 of them from me because I was being your Carl Rove. I was like, okay, yeah. go interview yeah. this guy. Okay, go interview her. Okay, go tell her this. Oh, she's interviewing you? Okay, say this to her. Okay, go, <laughs> go, go punch that statist and ask him about the non-aggression principle. <laughs> wow. So, Mark Stevens. Ugh, you too. <laughs> You're helping the Streisand effect here, brother man. Sorry, buddy. I just have to say, you know, play, it, it, I, I say this all the time in different ways. <laughs> if you fight the state according to the, according to the battlefield that the state chooses, with the weapons the state chooses, the state's going to win. I mean... Well, you're no. going to get a bunch of people calling you a statist now because I basically said the same thing, and a, a lot of people in his camps think that that's statist talk. Well, you know, it's it, it's choosing your battles and realizing who you can fight and how you can fight them and how you can win and how you can't. And and there are times when the robber's got the gun pointed right at your forehead that you just hand him your wallet and you don't do a thing about it. There are other times when you sneak up on the robber in the middle of the night and you club him to death. But this is not one of those times when they have the drop on you. They have 
everything in their court, you know, in their world, and, and you just try to get out with the least amount of damage as possible. And, and playing these word tr games and word tricks, you're just going to irritate them. You know, don't poke a lion. Don't poke a dragon. You just you, you get out with what you can get out. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> you, you got my vote. You got my non. You got my non vote. Yeah. Anyway, I wanted to throw that out because I just, you know, man, she she's got the uh, what? How old is her son? I I, I can't remember. I don't want to get too personal about her and stuff. I know. Yeah. He's, he's a kid. <laughs> she really should be out of this conversation completely. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 ha that. I have. To, I'm going to have to reference it when he call gets me on Free Talk Live because it's going to be like, well, this is what irritated me. But yeah, people should stop talking about Jillian and respect her privacy. I think, which you know, I could be accused of, hey, you're the one that brought this all up, but and brought it out in the spotlight. But I ran it by Jillian. You know, I was like, hey, do you mind if I do this? And she's like, no. So yeah, yeah. You know, I have a really good friend who's an attorney in a Washington State, and I haven't talked to him specifically about this case, but he and I have talked a lot about the corruption in the state. And and the problem is not that you know, well, if you just say these magic words, sometimes you can get a, this, or sometimes the, no. If you're talking about traffic court, and you're talking about the difference between spend between having to pay a three hundred dollar fine and a nine hundred dollar fine, then you know go after them. The stakes are worth it to try. At that yeah, point, yeah, absolutely. They're not but worth it with two drug felonies in Texas with a with a judge that hates your guts because yeah. the activist tried to help you, which is nothing against the activist who tried to help her, but it's like it didn't help her, man. You know, right, right. And that's another thing too with like call floods and. A demo already thinks I'm wrong uh, and doesn't like, you know, he, he's back in Mark in this. But uh, so I think I think with calling people with call flood stuff, I personally would limit it to people who are in my group who, who want that done, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, if it's different if some lady's growing, you know, tomatoes in her front lawn and you're going to call flood the local city council who's trying to fine her $25. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's, you know, hammer them, hammer them with everything you have. But if it's a case where a person is facing felony hard time in a real penitentiary, Texas then, penitentiaries don't have air conditioning a lot of the time. There's it, actually yeah. a, a case, there's a suit right now of people, you know, a, a valid suit of people saying, hey, we're almost dying in here. You know, this is a violation. You got to fix this. And the state is like, hey, you don't you don't want to do the time. Don't do the crime. You know, that's basically yeah. their answer. Yeah, I I have a, a good friend who has experience with that in Texas. And, and it's not it's not a game. You know, it's easy to sit on the Internet and talk about things and theorize and stuff. But, you know, well, Mark goes when, into court. He, he actually goes into court with people um you know yeah but he doesn't go to jail for him yeah somebody sent me something um it's a pdf of the legal proceedings from a 2005 in casper wyoming where where i live where he actually came up and represented somebody in federal court in an irs case um and the guy you know mark was there and the guy was was uh using mark's technique and it did not go well and the you know he ended up uh it didn't help him and he ended up um, you know, challenging it, appealing it and got fined $6,000. Now, Mark says that he never paid that $6,000. I don't know if that's, he never have to, or had to, or there's a warrant or what, but you know, I have the documents that say the court, <laughs> the court does not like this sophistry. You're fined $6,000. And that's the word they use. Right. And I can tell you too, uh, talking about my, my friend who I referred to a moment ago, who is actually a part-time judge and he's also an attorney. Um, statist, he, statist. He, yeah, Fred, I'm, yeah, really, I'm, he, I'm he getting is. that. I'm getting like, I, you, I talked to an attorney about this a friend of mine yeah. and they're like statist, you know, Mark was like, you talk to an attorney, you know, you, you bow to the authority. He, he used very yeah. similar language to that. No, but, but you know, they're in the game. They know how this works. They do stuff. it 24 seven. You know, yeah. I don't have a problem with unlicensed attorneys, but I, an advantage some licensed uh, license isn't the proper word of you know attorneys who are admitted to the bar and have a practice uh yeah they are they are in it all day long and another thing is like you can't 
no, a, even lawyer, even attorneys who are in bars in multiple states, you know, limited to three or four tops. You can't know the law in every state, and it's not right. a one size fits all thing. And there's a lot of cronyism in it too when you get into local areas and local judges and stuff. And they really have a little circle of attorneys that they'll deal with, and anybody outside of that circle, they they just shun them. You know, yeah. A lot and of like that another happens. thing about practicing in one location as opposed to all over the country, like Mark does. And he actually practices, you know, in other countries, gives people this, this advice. Yeah. You know, if you practice in one area, like, you know, this judge, you can be late with a filing. This judge will not tolerate it. You know the clerks, you know everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in in thinking about this as what you've called a, what do you call it? A podcast beef or a pod beef? What do you, what this do you really isn't man. I've joked about a pod beef before, but that's like, you know, when I say in passing, like, Oh, so-and-so interviewed Ben Quaker and asked him why he doesn't vote. That is so square. And that's the end of it. And I never mention it again. That's, yeah. that's a pod beef. This is, this is a whole different level. I've never done this. The only person I've written a letter like this to open letter was like Ronald Reagan and the Wyoming Repo <laughs> and the governor of Wyoming. You know, I've well, never done it to somebody in my circle. Well, I think Mark's and I know we're getting ready for a break, but I, I think Mark's intentions are good. I think he's. Yeah, just, I do, too. I really do. Yeah, it's just the effectiveness we're Tired talking about. Chief Fox. Yo, Chief Fox and Ev Dub sounds like a Saturday morning cartoon or a techno group. <laughs> So the Ben Quaker, the bad Quaker, the Ben Stone called me on the phone. See, I'm awake now. I wasn't when we started. I'm like, woo, let's go all night. But <laughs> uh, last half hour of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben's not coming back. He said what he's got to say. And um, he's going to do a podcast episode on not specific, not only on Mark Stevens, but on, you know, some on that, but on the, the bigger picture of the whole uh, private representation fighting the state on its terms or not on its terms. Jury nullification, all sorts of tasty, delicious stuff. Yeah, that'll be a good one to listen to. Ben yeah. Stan. I love him. I can't believe even in pod world, I miss him. You know, he's he uh, on the other end of Skype. I think he is my favorite podcaster. He really is. He, he does one like every day, though, too. He does, he? but he's retired and has uh, <laughs> mental brain issues. Not mental issues. Brain brain damage. Physical brain damage. So, uh, which doesn't undermine anything. It's just he, you know, can't work now. And maybe that's why he's so smart. It probably is. Well, he was smart before. He was he used to build drones, or he, he worked for the company that builds <laughs> drones as an engineer. Yeah. Statist! Statist! No, but he once was blind, and now he sees. You know, there's a lot of value to redemption in the world. That's deep. Which is why here in the third act, I want to have some redemption and get away from this whole pod beef fight of the century crap. I'm really sick of it, man. I'm, I don't I'm even know what you're talking about. Oh, the Mark Stevens beef. No, I knew that. Ah, <laughs> uh, you were. I get you. I get yeah, you. See what I did there? Yeah, I like it. Let's let's continue to do that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if it keeps going on, whenever anyone searches Mark Stevens' name, my uh, eventually my my uh, letter to him is gonna be the first thing that comes up, or one of the first things that comes up. And if it gets dropped, that's gonna happen. That's not gonna I happen. Wonder, I wonder if you're gonna make it to his hard drive. There's going to be a folder on his uh, right there. Which is a, a reference to my statement. He who dies with his art on the most hard drives wins. I'm sure he has an MWD folder by now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, sad to say, I have one on each of my computers. <laughs> who doesn't, man? <laughs> and, and ladies out there, I'm sure there's lots of ladies who have... Uh... <laughs> I'm, so when's your, when's your movie coming out? I'm flirting with imaginary people while my while my wife is listening. I think she's napping. But uh, my movie, my new movie, Gun yeah. Training with so, the Non-Aggression Principle. Yep. I don't know, man. I do art and just ship it out. I approved the uh, the artwork uh, PDFs yesterday. So uh, cool. two months, about two months. Ugh. Yeah. What? You can't wait that long? Yeah, I, I, I saw the trailer a couple of weeks ago. It was before Pork Fest, but it looks awesome. It is awesome, man. It's, uh, you know, a lot of what I do is try to find a lot of what the, the art I make that I've done my whole life, even before I was in Liberty, like in music and writing and everything. Um, a lot of what I like 
is uh, a lot of what I make is stuff that doesn't quite exist out there. Like, you know, there's something that doesn't exist. And I say, well, I'd like to consume that. So I make it for me and then other people dig it. Yeah. Which is a much better idea <clears throat> than finding out what everyone else is doing and is hot now and doing it because otherwise that won't be hot by the time you get to, yeah. you know, a good level with it. The phase has passed. Some news you can use. I had some other news you can use when you're talking about shotguns was what I keep in my home defense shotgun is uh, I keep, it's got, you know, it holds six rounds and uh, I do not keep one in the chamber. Cause you know, you just really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> If yeah. you ever have to, um, I keep everything else with one in the chamber. Nima keeps everything with two in the chamber, apparently, according to his rap songs. I'm so hard, bitch. I carry two in the chamber. I, can't, I heard you I guys can't, talking about I that. I can't yet. rap, but yeah, someone asked us, is that real? I'm like, no, it's a joke, man. You can't do that. You can if the gun's jammed, but. Mm. Uh, so, what I do with my home defense shotgun is I have five rounds of double aught buck, which is the, the stopping. You know, round shell, shot shell. Um, but on the top of the stack, the first one that's going to come out of the gun when I go is a slug. Now, the reason I do that is for the possibility that someone breaks into my house, I grab the gun, and they grab a loved one and hold a gun to their head. I don't want to be blasting them with a shot, sh shot with shot because that has a spray pattern. You know, at home mm -hmm. home ranges of like 10, 15 feet. That yeah. spreads to about eight, 10 inches. So I have a slug so I can take out the guy holding the gun to the loved one, to the wife or the cats. And uh, then, then if they grab a cat, if they grab a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Nina has a new song with a line that I wrote. It's about fed goons. It's called fleas, which is federal law enforcement agents. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is one of the best lines I've ever written other than, I, I carry two in the chamber, which I wrote. Um, it says something like, "It's you're you're so bad, you you'd use a kitten as a silencer." <laughs> <That's> horrible. <laughs> it is, man. But that's how I feel about the state. They would use a kitten as a silencer. <laughs> Annie's cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. So what else, man? I don't know. You got me in the mood to go shooting now, though. Yeah, I would, except it's 95 degrees with like 20 mile an hour winds here. That is not a time I want to go stand out in the wilderness yeah. and bake and get blown over and get sand blown in my face. Wyoming is like high desert plain. It's not really desert. There are part, parts of it that are. I mean, people think of Wyoming, they think of Jackson Hole, like, you know, oh, Yellowstone. Oh, glorious, beautiful, amazing places. Where I live is like a small town surrounded by nothing. I mean, it's the plains. It, it looks like the moon with sagebrush. <laughs> yeah. It is, I bet there's some good four-wheeling out there. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of... You can drive them on the street here, man. <laughs> My first day in Wyoming, one of the first things I saw, coming from California where everything is illegal, I saw... This was awesome. It was like this... I. I think lesbian chick. She was real manly looking, but it was a chick with a crew cut and wearing a, a wife beater driving an ATV four wheeler on the high, on, the, on a city street with no helmet with a dog behind her. And it was like belching smoke. And I'm like, that is literally legal in Wyoming. And I don't like the belching smoke part, but I don't think it should be illegal. I think the free market should magically take care of it. But I was like, how many laws would she be breaking in California? Yeah, seriously. You know? I don't know. I, I can't even imagine. I've never even been to California. Yeah. I hear things. You know, they, there's a book called Three Felonies a Day. That chick in California would be committing four misdemeanors every time she set foot out of her house. <laughs> uh, arbitrary laws. Yeah. It's so weird how they happen, you know? Old, basically, it's because old people can vote. Because well, there's voting. But it's old people vote, and old people are scared. And they want to be protected. And it's really easy to scare them by telling them, oh, X, Y, and Z are going to kill you. News at 11. And then, yeah, it's and then, kind of like this swimsuit ban thing in Jersey. We're going up there. You going to get arrested? No, I'm not going to get arrested. Uh, it doesn't even look like they're enforcing it anymore. They've repealed the bill already. But we're still going to have the party anyway. What's the story for those who well, don't know? Apparently back in, I, I think it was like the 40s or the 50s, they... We're trying, you know, it was a different time back then, and they didn't want people like showing, walking up on showing the board. their ankles in public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, just like you know, fat people with no shirt on or something. I don't know. We must regulate that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. 
Uh, and then, so apparently that somebody wanted it to start getting enforced again in Jersey. And now there's a little event going on at, I think it's Ashbury Park. Uh, Is Bruce Springsteen going to play there? That's where he's from, isn't it? <laughs> I have no idea. He's going to come Bruce- out naked with a with a pink strap on in support huh. of it, playing playing a free concert. That's what I heard. Uh, I, <laughs> I did not. By the way, that. anyone who believes everything that they hear on the Freedom Fiends podcast should not take advice or legal advice from a podcast whose motto is tasing you with liberty since 2011. Yeah, that's a good That's my point. disclaimer, man. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you're going to go to the beach and swim, and that's political somehow, right? Yeah, sure. Cool. It, it, it's more cool just to be with fellow liberty-minded individuals and... Scantily clad liberty minded individuals. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's what it's about, man, isn't it? See, in yeah. the 60s, activism got you laid. Does it get you laid now? Uh, I found my girl through it. Yeah? Well, there you go. Your girl is really cool and pretty, so I guess it does still work. <laughs> I miss the 60s. I was born in 64, so I was like, you know, 10 by the time it was all over. Because the 60s went into the 70s, like 72, 74, but you know, by the yeah, time I was 10, it was gone. It's- the 60s started late. It was dead. Yeah. What's up, G Fox? What up? M Dub here. So I'm going to call this episode G Fox, M Dub, The Streisand Effect, and Naked Activism. You want to talk more about naked activism? Sure, why not? Naked activism is fun. <laughs> you done any? Guess, uh, say what? You ever done any? Uh, no, actually, I have not. I did. I did some streaking. It wasn't really streaking, though. It was when I was 18, 18 or 19, when I was in community college, which I flunked out of. That's my uh, my degrees. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got kicked out of boarding school and flunked out of my second year of community college. So uh, one day, I just it was really hot, and I was hanging out with my friend. We were walking from his van to class, and I was just like, I, you know, I'm gonna take my. Sh-. I took my shirt off, and I was like, I wish I could take my pants off. And he's like. Why don't you? And I'm like, okay. I took off my pants, my shirt, folded them up my hand, kept my shoes on because the pavement was really, really hot. And I walked across, you know, the school, the campus to, uh, to the student union, walked across student union, went in the bathroom, put my clothes back on because it was air conditioning cold in there. I don't know why I went in the bathroom to put my clothes on. I was already naked, but, uh, a mm. couple <laughs> days, couple, nothing really happened, but a couple days later, this was in, let's see, 64, 74, like 82, 1982. This, this woman came up to me really pretty, really kind of like nerdy, straight looking woman came up to me. I'd never even noticed her before, spoken to her at all. And she said, you know, I used to really like you. I've been looking at you and I had a lot of respect for you, but I lost all my respect when you took off your clothes and walked across the campus. (laughs) So that naked activism did not get me laid. Yeah. And I don't know um, if there was really a purpose behind it either, aside from the fact that it was hot. It was because I could, which, you know. Okay. That was that was that was my activism back then. I didn't know anything about politics. That same year, there were libertarians who set up in the student union, and uh, you know, I looked at their card table one day and looked at their pamphlets, and they started talking to me about marijuana legalization, and they were so because I looked like a total hippie back then. I had long blonde hair and wore little gold granny glasses and wore an army jacket and kind of dressed like John Lennon, my hero, and. Uh, <laughs> they were so religious and like, you must do this about it that I, I was just, even though I smoked pot at the time, I was like, no way, man. Libertarians are like Catholic. They're like, they're like pushy religious people. Okay. So this was, but this was like the, the LP libertarian party. Yeah. Mofo. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, I totally, I, I found out about the libertarian party. Like after I was done with the whole, politics thing it's like suit and tie activism you know yeah they, they wouldn't libertarian party would not they would they would fight for your right to walk naked across the schoolyard but they'd never do it yeah i have a thing about men in ties i just i, I never trust a guy in a tie for some reason what is that why because they because you wake up every morning and put a noose around your neck e- exactly nemo wears a tie <laughs> nemo wore a tie a lot at work uh you know and he he played a guy who wore a tie in the guns and weed movie but he's not really a tie guy well, I mean, you know what I mean. Obviously, if you you have a job where you're required to wear a tie is one thing, but you know what I mean, like the evil, like, uh, 
you know, the corporate guy with the tie on. I tempt in offices in like law firms and uh, graphic arts places in San Francisco. Um, you know, I was a bike messenger for many, many years, but when I, I couldn't do it after I quit drinking. When I was 30, I gave up all drinks and drugs, drinks and drugs and, uh, except caffeine and nicotine. And I, I couldn't, I had to drink to be a bike messenger, which sounds crazy. Like, you know, I had to have one in me to drive. I didn't drive drunk on a bike. I mean, not that doesn't, it's, that is, that is a fatal job if you're sober. Uh, I didn't drink, but I had to drink every night to deal with it. You know, the stress of doing it. It's like, and I never wanted to like go out and ride bikes on the weekends like all my friends did. I wanted to like stay in a basement and smoke cigarettes to recover from that job. But (laughs) but then I went and I went back to college when I was 30, you know, went to like secretary school basically for a year and then went and put on a suit and tie and registered with temp agencies and went and temped in offices for four years. And uh, man, talk about Square. Square. I always wanted to be a bike messenger. It was awesome. It was the coolest job I've ever had, man. Ever since I saw that movie Quicksilver. Yeah. That movie uh, was all actors. They didn't use real bike messengers, which is understandable. You know, who wants to deal with real people? You know, directors don't want to deal with real people. Real people have opinions. (laughs) Right. Yeah, uh, definitely. Not into the whole uh, gossipy. I was a bike messenger when that movie came out, actually. No, 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 no. I was a bike messenger when the real world came out with a, with a real bike messenger on it. That guy, um, Puck. Remember oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always had the Think skateboard hat on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, that was we- when I could actually watch a little bit of reality TV. No, I was a bike messenger when in 86. When uh, Yeah, because I moved to San Francisco in 85 and immediately got a job as a bike messenger. But, you know, I couldn't – It's it was hard to make money doing that, man, too, and, like, survive because you had to do so much drugs and alcohol and eat so much food to have enough calories to do it that you couldn't save any money. So I didn't have money to see movies. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I was a little baby. And you couldn't download them then. That didn't mean anything. Back then, when, when I worked, a lot of what I did as a bike messenger was took um, zip drives. Do you remember zip drives? They were like uh- – they they were like the size of a, of a CD almost, but like an inch thick and they held a hundred megs and they cost like, you know, $27 of 1985 money, you know, like 50 bucks now. Um, yeah. And they hold a hundred megs and they were like the big, they were like what people used for big files. And I would do, I would take computer aided drawing CAD files, like what you make all day long on zip drives across town and deliver them. Oh, Wow. Yeah, there was uh there was no emailing back then. And then when there was emailing, it was all dial up for a while. You've been replaced by FTP sites. Yeah, I was one of the first people that that I I'm the old first person I know outside of academia that had DSL. I had it in 2000 uh 5, 6, 2000 uh no, 96. 90 Yeah, I got an I don't even the internet started in 93, 94. I was on the internet. Yeah. I had it in 96 or 97 because San Francisco was one of the first places it got it. And you had to live within a thousand feet of a phone company to get it back then. And I did. Uh, mm. Dude, I was on dial up forever. <laughs> I have a friend who told me he flunked out of college because he went from dial up in Wyoming to, um, you know, fast internet in his dorm in denver and like flunked out the first year because he was just like porn free movies free music oh my god and never went to class or never studied (laughs) that's funny yep you think you'd do better with all the internet access you'd think you'd think so you know the government thinks so they want to steal a bunch of money to make sure the last two percent that don't have dsl get it yeah we're so spoiled now i say you know if someone can't earn enough money or doesn't want to live, do do they need it? <laughs> do those people need it? That's my thought. And why don't they get it themselves? Okay. Uh, those people, who are you talking about? The people that don't have the internet yet. Obama wants to, uh, uh, actually they started under Bush. They want to like use taxpayer money to wire the last few people that don't have dial up. I mean, that don't have DSL. That's creepy. Yeah. Some of it's like there's areas you can't get it, but those are few and far between. But they also want like everyone that can't afford it. They want us to pay for it. Of course. As yeah. with everything else. Yeah. So those people can get online and do activism for Obama. Yeah. I love those memes that 
talk about how they want you know everybody to pay a tax and then they realize oh i am everybody <laughs> yeah i like the one of the uh occupy wall street chick getting maced in the face by a cop and there's a bunch of like goon cops in full riot gear you know it's like the hippies are on the left of the picture the cops are on the right of the picture and there's a thing over the chick that's getting maced that says wants more government and then there's an arrow pointing to the cop that's <laughs> macing her that says more government yep that's what you'll get when will they get it when will they get it yeah yeah it's disgusting worms we're gonna um we're gonna get kicked off the interwebs here in a, in a moment or two do you have any closing thoughts g dub well no just thanks thoughts. for having me on it was a lot of fun thanks for being had man it was a good time it was had by all look forward to he hearing how nima's doing with the big move yep we didn't get a chance to talk about it. We want to talk about how great the song is by Johnny Cash so called Man in Black. It's a total anarchist song from the 60s, man. Just go listen to it. It's a damn good song. I will post it in the show notes. Yeah, it's about why he wears black. And it's basically like, you know, I wear black because things aren't good. And once things are fixed, I'll, I'll wear bright colors. And it's an anti-war song, too. You know, it's I wear black for the, you know, hundred good young men killed every year. And that was written during the Vietnam War. And a lot of his fans are patriots. And he really stuck his neck out doing an anti-war line in the 60s. I'm telling you. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was Johnny Cash, though. Can't He's the original, the original punk, man. I love that picture of him flipping off the camera. It's really yeah. a black and white I, picture from 1960 or something. Yep. He was a badass. He really was. I saw him live once. I'm really glad I did. Oh, well, yeah, that must have been awesome. What's up, G-Fox? We're, uh, we're almost out here. Is this it? This is it. One by quick. Worms. 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 Oh, yeah. Disindoctrination.com. Disindoctrination.com. If you can spell it. If not, search it on Google. Yeah, it's in there. I'll link it in the show notes. Awesome. Worms. I'll call you up after this, man, on the telephone. All, All right, cool, man. We're out. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com.